Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the McGonagall Boxing Podcast. Let's get straight down to it, shall we? So, <laughs> I keep tossing and turning like the rest of the general public. Tossing and turning, tossing and turning. And <sighs> Tuesday, I was saying Khan, for sure. He's going to catch Brooks with a flurry. Brooks, weight drained. His chin's gone. There's no way I can see Kel Brook winning in 2022 against Amir Khan, who I still believe has got the speed and the reflexes over Kel Brook. And then, of course, I saw him, you know, all right, albeit 10 minutes, but in the ring, seeing the, the, the combinations and the snap from Kel Brook and the partnership with Ingle. And then I saw Elaine, let's be honest, just shadow boxing from Khan. There was no uh, rapport or relationship with his trainers. It just looked... To most of you, amateurish, and I thought, goodness me, Brooks going to steamroll Khan. Khan is a constant change, a trainer, uh, you know, inactivity. This is not looking good. But then, of course, I have to look back at some like a uh, Eubank on Instagram hitting pad. You think, my goodness, this guy is the best pound for pound star in the world. And then he gets in the ring, and let's be honest, he's very, very underwhelming. Um, so. I'm constantly going to and fro. What I saw, though, for me, it was advantage Khan on Tuesday, of certainly advantage Brook on Wednesday. But yesterday, at the final presser, no doubt about it, it was advantage Khan. Like, um, you know, obviously Khan's trainer Bo, very, very outspoken, very confident. And what he was saying, he was speaking with such conviction, they end up getting to you. I mean, he's got confidence, obviously, with Crawford on a winning streak with Crawford. And he's a very hard disciplinarian. And you could tell, you know, he wasn't taking any crap from Khan uh, in the camp. He's trained him hard. You can tell that straight away. But what he was saying was interesting. He says, listen, Brooks is a shot fighter. Doesn't live the life. He's good for four rounds and that's it. After four rounds, he's done. And he said it with such conviction that clearly you know something. But... <sighs> Then I start weighing up and going, well, you've got to be careful because Brooke, who fought Crawford, was not 100%. No chance. He spent most of that camp losing weight, most of the camp training on his own. Um, you know, and it was on foreign ground. He wasn't right. So I think he's got to be careful there by what he says. But because he said it was such conviction, and what was interesting is Brooke didn't fire back. Now, if I'm total confident in myself and I know someone's talking complete bullshit about me I'm going to fire back with venom I'm going to go shut your mouth you don't know what you're talking about you fat out of shape American that's what I would say to him I'm in the best shape of my life I'm going to spark your boy out and had I been 100% I would have sparked your, your golden boy out as well had I had Ingle in my corner I would have sparked him out that's what I would have said if I had a full belief in myself what did Brooke say? said nothing, did nothing. He just stood there, almost in acknowledgement. That was a big telltale sign. I mean, if you're gonna sit back and reserve defeat like that in a press conference, what are you gonna do in the ring come Saturday night? I mean, some people may go, oh, he's just staying calm, not getting wound up, not getting drawn into a, you know, a childish war of words where he zaps his energy and gets wound up. But I'm sorry, that wasn't a good sign for me. I think you've got to fight your corner there when someone's trying to badmouth you and trying to build up your opponent and shoot you down. He just stood there, did nothing. And the only one who fired back was Ingle. And he didn't really fire back with conviction. He kind of just accepted um, all the bad mouth about Brooke being washed up and Crawford beat playing with him. I would have said, no, no, no. Listen, he wasn't in my corner and I don't fight for money. Um, the reason why I didn't train him was because I didn't think he was ready. If I was going to do it for money, I would have trained him. I said, again, against Crawford. I knew he wasn't ready and I'm not prepared to take the money. That's what I would have said. And I said, listen, your fighter was losing the first three rounds against Brooke and he was at 70%. That's what I would have said in defence of him against the Crawford fight. But Ingle didn't really, I mean, he got into war of words, but it wasn't, and maybe he was trying to wind Bo up, which he did do, but it wasn't convincing. And, and, and Bo spoke with such conviction. And to be fair, Khan sounded a lot more assertive. He sounded calm but assertive. Whereas Brooks seemed to stumble over his words a little bit. Seemed a little bit rattled and then he said nothing. Um, you know, when Bo started laying into him saying he's washed up, I wasn't impressed with Brooks' whole demeanour yesterday. So I've got to go 
Vantage Khan again. And I'll probably be going yo-yo today when I see the weighing. But no question, I do think Khan's in Brook's head. I think they both want to win the fight. But for me, it's Brook, for me, is certainly more personal. And I think he's got to be careful there. I think Khan looks more confident, even though he's been out the ring longer, even with a change of trainer. I think he's totally convinced. I think Bo's convinced him that he can stop Brook. Brook's punch resistance has gone. His legs have gone. His reflexes have gone. I think he needs to be careful with that. But it was a very telltale sign yesterday um, with Brook saying nothing. And Brook Bo speaking with such conviction. Almost like he knows what's going to happen. And a lot of words are powerful. Words become actions a lot of the time. So for me, I'm leaning back towards a calm flurry early. Three or four just on the ropes. And just, you know, beating Brook up on the ropes. Um, and I don't think Brook will have the speed uh, anymore to, to, to catch him or counter him. It's very easy saying Brook's going to land, but you need timing. You know, as for, what, for all the stick we give Khan, and let's be honest, he has got a glass chin when connected right, but you've still got to time it. You've still got to ca catch him. And, you know, he's a very, he, he's been a world class boxer. He's still a very, very good boxer. And he still sees punches coming. And obviously, he's aware, you know, he's not stupid that people are looking for that. So you've got to catch him. And if you're not good enough to do that or set traps or fast enough, it's going to be a long night for you. Ask his, you know, his 39 opponents. Ask Malinaji. Ask Devin Alexander. Even ask Canelo for the first six rounds, you know. So I've got to go advantage Khan again. And I've got to go with a Khan stoppage win. Um, you know, some people are flipping the script altogether. They reckon it's going to be a complete ball fest. They're going to be so frozen with fear of losing that both of them are going to fight KG. And Khan might just sneak a, uh, a dull point win. I hope not. I could possibly see that. I really could. But I think the latter. I think Khan, right now, with his demeanour, the way he was in that press conference, I think he's going to stop Brook with a flurry. And I think he's so convinced um, that Brook's washed up that he's going, going to go in for the kill. Obviously, he needs to be careful. But Bo speaks of convictions and words are powerful. And I didn't see enough coming back from Team Brook, um, certainly Kel Brook, to, to fight his corner. I've got to go Team Khan. I've got to go Advantage Khan again. I've got to go Khan Stoppage.